these are pictures of hospital ships bringing New Zealand boys back home. The sick and the wounded who have done their share of a great task not yet finished. Their courage and their cheerfulness in the face of hardships are an inspiration to those of us who have stayed at home. The Honourable Mr Jones, Minister of Defence, expresses some of these feelings as the ship ties up. Down there on the wharf is only a step from home. The wives and families, girls and friends whose affection lends warmth to a homecoming that is both glad and solemn. The journey isn't finished yet, but there are cars and helpers to speed its final stages. Over at the casualty clearing station, the same idea prevails. Everything possible is done to make the men comfortable and to get them quickly to their homes. Staff workers and volunteers from the Red Cross and John Ambulance and the EPS set to with a will. In the lounge, the men will meet their friends and families, and here they are. As soon as they arrive, the men are grouped in the ward so that those from the same district are together. Every man is x-rayed, has a dental examination, and goes before a medical board. Skilled voluntary help and expert staff work cut waiting time to the minimum. For the next stage of the journey, a special hospital train is run into a siding at the back door of the clearing station. Here too, good equipment and expert staff minister to the comfort of men for whom even the best is not too good. As a practical and generous contribution to a war effort that is also theirs, the Netherlands Indies government presented this fine ship to be an Anzac hospital and here she delivers the first of her precious freight in a New Zealand port. It's the same sad yet happy story all over again. The men who went away have come back and hearts are too full properly to express their feelings. The more serious cases go straight from ship to ambulance under the watchful eyes of the Oranges nurses and medical orderlies who know every man by name. To them, the New Zealanders have so much endeared themselves that they're no longer just cases, but friends. Soon they'll be home, back in the place they went half round the world to fight for. These are men who fought and suffered to keep alive the decent, simple things, to enjoy in their own way and our own way the freedom to live out their lives without fear of tyranny and oppression. Back where they've just come from are thousands more like them. Here at home are more ready to join them. They deserve and they must have every last ounce of support that we at home can give them.